So before I start on uh, chapter 7 and 8, someone had asked me about the framed sheet music behind me. And there's a kind of a neat story behind it. Uh, this has been always one of my favorite Christmas albums. And the song Christmas Present is just a great song. And I had always wanted to sing it at church, but there was never a track available, nor could I ever find uh, any sheet music for it. So I knew that a gentleman by the name of Larry Brown had written it, and so I tracked him down um, off of Facebook, and he hadn't posted very much, but I, I wrote a note, and um, we had a very, very nice conversation about the writing of that song and uh, the recording of it. And so he had kindly sent me copies of the lead sheets that they used the day that they actually recorded that song um, at the studio. It was really a nice gesture on his part. And so because he had sent that to me, um, I took them over to... Um, Hobby Lobby and have that had it mounted on a real nice board and frame and and wanted to save it because it was a very very nice <coughs> gesture on his part to be able to send me that music because otherwise um, I would have not ever been able to use it so it's kind of a neat thing when you just ask people and they're kind enough to to do things for you so that's one of my favorite Christmas albums of all time. Now, in addition to that, my two favorite other Andy Williams albums are this one, Greatest Love Classics. These are all excerpts of classical music pieces by Beethoven, Mozart, Vivaldi, um, Schubert, and... Um, and they actually put uh, words, lyrics, to the music itself. And uh, Tony Hiller and Nicky Graham were the ones in England that were responsible for doing this project. And so just on a lark one day, I thought, because again, this is another one of my favorite albums of Andy Williams before he passed. And I was lucky enough to be able to get his phone number and... Um, uh, Tony Hiller and I talked for about 45 minutes um, when I called him over in England about the recording date and the process. And um, he was kind enough to share the time with me to tell me all about what a nice person uh, Andy Williams was, how they started off with 33 separate melodies and lyrics, and then Andy uh, pared it down to the ones that they actually put on the album. That album and Andy's last album that I know of, this one, Close Enough for Love, are probably the two best sounding albums that Andy ever made. They were recorded great. He sounded great. Um, and so I always tell people that if you're looking for things, you might still be able to find these on CDs. I don't think the LP is available anymore. I also have the CDs available of them, um, but they are two just absolutely spectacular um, uh, albums of Andy Williams. And so, if you happen to be a fan like I am, um, those are those are the three albums that I'd like to own if I had them. Now, I'm also a big fan of Mr. Bennett, Anthony Benedetto. This is my favorite album of Tony's. It's called The Art of Excellence. It's still available, and I would urge you to buy this, even if you can only find the CD of it, because it's just a great album. And again, very well recorded. Recorded by the late, great Al Schmidt, who is the engineer at Capitol. And I tell you, if you're, if you're a vocalist and you want to find a record label, um, Capitol is a place that you want to go to, so... So enough of that music stuff. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry that my voice is so bad.
But that's what prostate cancer surgery did for me. So anyhow, you just have to roll with it, right? Okay. So this is An Uncommon Gift, Chapter 7 and 8. When the Davis and Mason families arrived at church, Bobby saw Diane talking with some other girls from school. He slowly walked over to give them time and a chance to finish their conversations. One of the girls tapped Diane on the shoulder and pointed to Bobby approaching them. She motioned for him to come join them. I was just telling Jane and Marcia about what a great time we had last night at the university concert, said Diane. Yes, it was great fun, wasn't it, said Bobby. Jane and Marcia, since you are also in the band, would you like to come with us on the next one, asked Bobby. Oh, yes, that would be a great idea, said Diane, with great excitement. We don't know when it'll be, but you could ask your parents if it would be okay for you to come with us. Your parents might want to come as well, she added. Jane and Marcia were in agreement that that would be fun, and they would talk to their parents about it while they were at church today. Jane played the cello and Marcia the oboe, so they were quite a bit ahead of Bobby. Bobby, Diane said you are starting to take up the clarinet again, so are you going to join our group at school, asked Marcia. If you do, we could all start practicing together and form our own quartet, she asked. Yes, I am coming to the band room early tomorrow and asked the teacher if I could join, but I won't be very good right away. It will take me some time to get back to playing very well, he concluded. Don't worry about it, said Jane. We have many kids who are not very good, so don't be intimidated by not playing in a while. She added that, she added that warmly. She didn't want to scare him off from joining. <clears throat> I am taking lessons at the university twice a week, Monday and Friday after school, so I am going to try and get up to speed as fast as I can, he stated. You'll do fine, said Diane. Just don't think you have to rush. I won't, said Bobby. I'm going to work hard, though. We better start heading up to Sunday school class, I think. With that, they all started to head toward the stairs as the classrooms were all on the second floor of the fellowship hall. The girls were in one class, and the boys in another, so they went their separate ways. Diane smiled and waved goodbye to Bobby. In church, Bobby and Diane sat together, and before service started, they talked about the concert and dinner and what a great time it was. They both had hoped to get a chance to hear Mrs. Miller play the flute sometime soon. That would be a real treat. Diane said that she had just started to learn how to write up some music for a violin, as that was a good way to learn music notation, and she offered to help Bobby get started as well. We could start working on a violin and clarinet duet, she said. It would not have to be very complicated, she added. It can't be too complicated, or I won't be able to play it, Bobby said with a laugh. We will work on it together. Maybe over lunch at school, she added, hoping. That would be fine, added Bobby. Just then the organist started playing the doxology, and church was starting. The congregation rose, started singing, and Bobby and Diane's plans would have to wait until later. When church was over, Bobby and Diane said their goodbyes and headed home with their families. Bill stopped at KFC and got the family meal bucket so Mary wouldn't have to cook on Sunday. That would work fine for Bobby and his mom for sure. After lunch, Bobby went upstairs and turned on the Yankees versus White Sox game on the radio and started putting his clarinet together, first putting a little cork grease on the clarinet sections and had it all together pretty quickly. He and Mark had started out with a number two reed and Bobby worked on getting it moistened and then put it on the mouthpiece ligature and tightened it down, position where Mark recommended. 
He then put his beginner's music book on the stand and started looking at the scales and the figuring that Mark had showed him and started to easily blow just like the lesson on Friday. He played the lower and upper scales to where it sounded pretty good. Bobby went over and turned off the game that had no score in the third. He really started to concentrate and play the scales even better. He kept at it for about 45 minutes and it was all starting to come back to him. He was aware that this buffet clarinet was very easy to blow and how nice the tone seemed, even though he was just beginning again. He decided that he had practiced enough for Sunday and pulled the bore cleaning rag through the clarinet to clean it out well. He pulled off the reed and cleaned the mouthpiece and carefully put the reed back in his paper holder, then pulled the clarinet apart, putting it all in the case. He then set it aside on the floor near the door so he forget, would not forget to take it to school tomorrow so he could go see his band teacher. He hoped he could get his schedule adjusted so he could do band the rest of the year and not have to wait until next year at high school to start. He would find out soon enough in the morning. He went downstairs where his dad was watching the Yankee game on TV. Bobby plopped down on the sofa and joined him. And that is how the rest of the afternoon went, as the Yankees end up beating the Sox 5-4. to four. Mom spent her time taking a well-deserved nap in the bedroom so as not to be disturbed. The rest of the day would be nice and quiet, and they all finished off the cold chicken for a light supper. Bobby listened to some music up in his room right before bed. The university radio station was again replaying the Saturday night concert, so Bobby listened to it once more. He wrote himself a note to ask Mark about what cassette deck he might get and a microphone choice as well. He was excited about learning about recording. There was always something new to learn, and it might become just another hobby. <coughs> that was Chapter 7. Okay, Chapter 8. Bobby was up early as he wanted to get to school and have a chance to go see Mr. Taylor, the band teacher, before school began and see if he could talk his way into joining the band. Bobby's dad said he would drop him off on his way to work, so Bobby made sure to take his clarinet and skateboard as he had a music lesson after school this Monday afternoon. He was excited about what the day may bring. Bobby ate his breakfast of oatmeal, toast, and O.J., as his mom had to keep reminding him to slow down. He did once in a while as his dad finished his second cup of coffee and his scrambled eggs. He kissed Mary goodbye, grabbed his briefcase, and with Bobby, headed out to the car. They backed down the driveway and headed west on Smith Street toward Benton and turned right at the stop sign. It was about a mile down to the middle school, and Bobby usually walked with his friends or skateboarded part of the time if some of his friends brought theirs. Everyone either walked or their parents drove them to school. There was no busing. Once at Walden Middle School, Bobby hopped out and headed up the large front stairs of the school as the school had three floors and the basement where the gym and the locker rooms were. There was also a raised track around the top of the gym, just over the ground level bleachers to the gym. There were two main baskets for the basketball games and two more sets on the sides for when the bleachers were pulled back for practices. If the boys practiced early, the girls were late and they alternated days so not every team had to stay too late after school. They had a study hall for the players who had to wait for late practices. Bobby reached the front doors and headed into the multi-purpose room where all the early students could sit at the lunch tables 
and talk or finish up their homework they did not do last night. Bobby looked in to see if Mr. Taylor was in the lunchroom this Monday. He was not, so Bobby headed up to the third floor band room and hoped he could find him there. <coughs> Bobby opened up the double doors to the band room that had a terrace of rows that stretched up five rows high in a half circle filled with chairs and music stands. The drummers and percussionists section took up the top row. Bobby turned right into the room and saw a light in Mr. Taylor's office, knocked down the door, and went in as he saw him sitting at his desk, looking over some sheet music. Mr. Taylor announced Bobby, could I talk to you for a minute? Sure you can, come in have a seat, said Mr. Taylor. What's in the case you're carrying, he asked. It's a brand new clarinet, and I was wondering if I could join your band here at school, Bobby asked with some apprehension in his voice. He was afraid the request might not be approved. I don't see why not, said Mr. Taylor. We can always use more wind players in our band, he said with a smile. Have you played before, he asked. Yes, sir, in grade school, Bobby stated. But I kind of stopped when I started playing sports. But I've started taking lessons again at the university twice a week. And getting into your band would give me even more lessons and practice time, he added. I won three medals in the city competition, two-thirds and a first, so I hope that I can get up to speed quickly. Well, good for you, Mr. Taylor added. I have three classes, first, third, and fifth periods, so head down to the office and see your counselor and see if your schedule can be arranged to fit any of those classes. Either of those classes will be fine for me, he added. Tell me about your instrument asked Mr. Taylor. It is a fine buffet clarinet, said Bobby proudly. It was a gift from a nice gentleman in town, Charles Miller, added Bobby. I know Charles and Cassandra very well, replied Mr. Taylor. They are the best of folks. Lucky you to befriend him, he added. May I suggest that you allow me to keep your instrument locked up in my office? as I have some combination lockers in which to keep it safe, he added. I have a spare locker, and I will give you the combination, and you can come get your clarinet whenever you need it. Is that okay with you, he added. Yes, sir, that would be great. I would hate to have it stolen, said Bobby. Okay, then, said Mr. Taylor. You head off to the office and work on your schedule, and I'll see you one of the periods today for band. I'll give you the combination then, he concluded. With that, Bobby rose from his chair. He shook Mr. Taylor's hand, handed him the clarinet case, and headed out of the band room down to the first floor offices. This was working out just as he had hoped. Now for the schedule change. He walked into the main office and asked to see his counselor, Miss Smith. She was in and saw him right away. She said she could work on moving a couple of classes around and see what she could do, but was glad that Bobby was going to be in the band. She asked if he would be willing to give up student council, as she could just chain and change it out for third period band and not have to change any academic classes. A good thing. Bobby agreed and said he could easily find someone to take his spot in student council, and he